great because sorry that's that that's a part of accessibility so thumbs up to careers and code for that um, as an accessibility specialist just to let you know i'm not only looking at um, accessibility just for websites but as a part of making sure that people in the classroom or even people that you work with get the most from being in our digital spaces. One of the things that um, we're also doing in the accessibility world is just making sure that when we meet that uh, folks who have difficulty hearing can fully participate in these conversations. So good job. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I'll get started with my presentation. Before I do that, let me do this. My computer is acting a little wonky right now, but slideshow, and hopefully this works. Okay. And hopefully it goes into slideshow mode. If not, we will have to do this directly from PowerPoint. Just a second, Max. I have a second screen going on here, and I think it's causing a slow for me. So, no I just, time. Uh, Okay. Maybe if I close up some stuff, that'll help. All right, let me try this again. Slideshow, full screen, and okay. And nothing's happening. So I will, I will just present directly from PowerPoint. Okay, so let's do this and let's do a portion of the screen and share the sound and share. Okay, I think this will work out for me. Here we go. Oops. All right, and I just need to whittle this down a little bit, and then we can get started. So good evening, everyone. My name is Dana McMullen, and I'm here to present to you to talk about digital accessibility, especially website accessibility, um, where it concerns those of us who do not have the ability to use a mouse to navigate and use our computers or experience the internet. So I work for, I don't know why this looks like this. I work for a company called Sidearm Sports and that's located here in Syracuse. And I currently do website uh, remediation for them. And if you're interested to know more about Sidearm Sports, um, we're at sidearmsports.com. And if you're interested in looking um, at a career at Sidearm Sports to become a, um, we're a front end developer, um, looking for an internship or something like that, we do hire for those roles. And the link is sidearmsports.com backslash careers. And I'll make sure that at the end of the presentation that we're sure to um, share those links with you all. So as a part of my experience in accessibility, I've been working over 20 years in this field. I only took time off um, for a few years when my dad got sick and I took care of him. But my work has, um, for the past 20 years, been primarily in assistive technology, adaptive technology, and uh, servicing folks with a wide range of disabilities. I started off my career in what they called assistive or adaptive technology, and I work mostly with hard copy as opposed to doing things on websites. So I created things like Braille, accessible PDF documents, raised line drawings, um, and so on. And so um, the reason for that is because, let's take, for example, if you're a person who cannot see, John. how are you going to, sorry about that, how are you going to be able to read a textbook so that you can graduate from college? Well, 
20 years ago, um, we didn't have the technology that we have now. And so a lot of the work that I did would be hiring someone like yourself to get a textbook and I would give you a tape recorder and you would read from that textbook. And then I would make sure that that cassette tape was, to, was delivered to the person who needed it. And that's how that's how they would read their textbooks. Um, we transitioned very shortly from that to creating accessible textbooks. And um, it's, I think that it's great that you all are able to go to places like Amazon and other places to get your eBooks. You also have your, your um, eBook apps that you have on your phone and your, com and your computers. But it wasn't like that when I first started. We would have to physically purchase those te textbooks and cut the binder off and run them through a scanner and what's called optical character recognition. And create those electronic textbooks from scratch um, so that they can be read by the computer. Um, if, if we were not able to cut the binder off of a book, we had to scan each page one by one. Now imagine doing that with a law textbook. Have any of you um, had any experience with trying to read uh, a law textbook or a history textbook? If, if you know what I'm talking about, you know those books can be quite large. <laughs> and a lot of times we had to scan the front and the back of them um, in order to create the electronic textbooks. And just very simply, those would go into um, a Word document. So that was just to give you a little bit of history uh, about where I've come from compared to um, what I'm doing now. So um, I started at Syracuse University in 2002 and 2005 as an assistive and adaptive technology specialist. Uh, from 2008 to 2010, I was a technology instructor for people who are blind. I did that through the New York State Commission for the Blind. Um, from 2005 to 2009, I was at Onondaga Community College doing assistive technology. And I've been with Sidearm Sports since June of last year. So to talk a little bit about my training and what has actually prepped me to do the work that I do, um, I am first and foremost proud to say that I am a graduate of the Careers in Code program and it has completely changed my life when, and I'm sure that Max and maybe even Jesse told you during the interview, the interview phase that if you could complete this program, that it would change your life. That definitely was not a lie. Um, doors have definitely opened for me since I graduated, but it was a lot of hard work. And I know that Max has definitely uh, got you working hard, getting those projects and stuff. And so I wanna encourage you to just stay the course. It is definitely going to be worth every single moment that you put into this. My coursework also includes um, going into computer information systems at Onondaga Community College. And my major there was programming and I had uh, a, a web development concentration. So um, I was doing, I was also doing courses in and out of web programming, that being HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And I was also doing things like um, networking. So also dealing with the hardware that had to do with computers. Um, most recently, I completed a bunch of certifications through a place called the Q University that was done online. So those courses included fast track to accessibility, web accessibility, document accessibility, the web accessibility certification prep, um, accessibility program management. That's important because being at the company that I'm in, we are a very large company. We have divisions in all 50 states and my home headquarters is in Dallas, Texas. And so I need to be able to communicate with managers, Diana with de Darius. developers, with designers. So, oh, excuse me with developers and with designers. So it's um, continuing education and certifications Diana like Darius. this. Sorry about that. 
hold on. Jada, come and get my phone. I'm sorry, you all. I forgot. Hold on. I'm just going to turn this off. My phone has not rang all day, and that's why I didn't know that it was even on. Okay, that takes care of that. So, um, so I'm not going to read through the rest of this. Well, actually, I am. So web access, I did a web accessibility boot camp also through the Q University, Angular accessibility, mobile app accessibility, which was great because when I was hired, I did not know that they would be having me test mobile apps for accessibility. So uh, it was good to have that notch in my belt. Um, and in addition, um, I also became certified to remediate PDF documents. Um, PDF documents can also be read by computerized screen readers or text readers but we just need to make sure that they are accessible. Um, I'm also certified to teach and support people who are blind how to navigate um, their PCs from the time that it's turned on. Um, I can also show people who are blind how to navigate and use the internet. I can also do that with people who are unable to see when using a Mac. And um, I'm also able to do that for people who are trying to navigate their Android phones and their iPhones um, without being able to see the screen. So um, I've had a lot of training along the way on this journey of making um, our digital environments accessible. It is an area that I'm very, very passionate about because I've always been the type of person where if I see someone who is not being included in something, I'm usually the one to reach out and say, hey, how can I help you? Or, hey, would, would you like to come along? And um, I, I just want to see everybody when it's just something that's always been a part of me. And the reason why I love working in assistive technology is because I consider it the best of both worlds in that I am not only able to enjoy a career in technology, but I'm also able to help people. So the skills that I find most useful to perform my job on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I must be able to understand what's called the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. These guidelines um, are made by a, a group of people from all around the world who get together and they look at websites and they say, if someone is unable to hear a video, they must be must have live caption or closed captions and they must be accurate. They define uh, what makes a website accessible for someone who is blind. If you're someone who is not even able to use their hands and you have to use something like um, sipping and puffing or you have difficulty tapping on your phone, uh, there's even a guideline that talks about if you have a button, what the length and the width of that button should be in order for someone who may have a tremor or something like that, or who is using something from their mouth just to be able to interact with the phone and to be able to, to navigate a link. So it, a link, it really does um, get that deep, but that is how we begin to make our digital environments um, inclusive to folks with disabilities. Um, if you want to go into this field, you have to have a good working knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The HTML and CSS is very important. JavaScript, if you have a basic knowledge of how it works and the coding patterns, that will also be very helpful. But you don't have to have an extensive knowledge of JavaScript. The JavaScript comes in handy because when you're talking about web apps or more complex areas in your website where JavaScript is used to control the behavior of the page, the JavaScript has to be formatted in such a way that it can interact with what's called assistive technology. And with that interaction, I mean, it's telling the assistive technology what to say or what to do to help someone navigate a website. So moving on from that, 
I need to be able to know how to fix um, inaccessible code. I need to be able to show developers um, where the code is. So I need to be able to go into inspector and find it because I, I will tell you, I'm not very <laughs> experienced with the dev operating um, environment of the developers at all. And I, I thank goodness that at this point in my job, it's not necessary that I do that. I am interested in doing that. But for right now, they keep me away from DevOps. I'm doing everything on the front end. I'm doing it through Inspector. So when I'm talking to the developers, I'll pull that up and I'll say, here's an image that doesn't have alt text and this is where you go and this is where you have to put it. And then with that handoff, they take it, they figure out where the code base is and what they need to dig into so that they can fix it on a live site. So that's kind of um, what I do in that regard. Um, and then once, once the developers actually fix it on a live site or a test site, that looks like the live site, I have to go in and I have to test it out with technologies that people with disabilities would use. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we move along. Um, I test with assistive technology and I also test without assistive technology just by simply using the tab key on my computer just making sure that I can tab from one link to the next um, and then if I get stuck or for some reason that I'm not able to tab around the screen then it's my job to let a developer know hey I'm trapped something weird is going on here I can't get to certain pieces of information that someone with a mouse could get to and then it's up to a developer to be able to uh, to fix the problem. So going back to talking to uh, talking about blind consumers, because there are a large number of people who are blind or visual visually impaired who uh, cannot see the screen the way that you and I can. And so my question is, if I'm blind and I can't use the mouse, then what do I do? So for the rest of us, we literally through the internet, we have the world at our fingertips. Any piece of information that we're looking for, we don't have to go to a library. We don't have to read a book. We can literally get to that with a click of a mouse. But what enables us to do that? we are able to see the screen and we are able to hear the audio. You being future authors of websites with your own company that you might start or with a web development firm that you may be hired at, you, you need to go in with an understanding that not everyone has those abilities. So, and you need to be able to test and fix those problems or test and communicate to a team of workers how to fix those problems. I'll come back to that one. So accessibility and testing is important because it helps you to find the areas that someone with a disability might run into when they're surfing the web. And the discoveries that we as testers make provide developers and designers with recommendations so that improvements can be made to the overall experience of the product application or website. In order for this process of evaluating your web page or application to be accessible, accessible and useful, you will need um, one of two things. You need to be able to, that's supposed to say replicate, you need to be able to replicate um, the problem during testing to make sure that it's there because sometimes we have user error or you need to be able to uh, develop a copy of the problem to be able to um, describe what it is, show what it is, and then fix it. 
So true web accessibility conformance does not happen by accident. You actually need a process. And so I actually want to show you a very simple and easy to use process that you can use to begin remediating your own websites. I am going to take you to the internet. And you've probably seen this before. If you have, that's fine. I'll go ahead and demonstrate it again. Let's see. So I am I, I am at, let me open this up because I know that you can only see part of my screen. So one of the oldest and best tools around for evaluating your own websites on a page by page basis is at wave.webaim.org. And all that you simply do is copy the URL of the page that you wanna test into this um, search bar right here, search bar up into your um, address field, and then you hit enter and it will give you the results of the accessibility scan for that page. So I'll go ahead and grab a URL of one of my favorite websites. I'll actually pick uh, one of our client sites. So let's see, what have we been working on? I'll go to Duke Athletics. So what I'm doing is I'm just clicking in the URL, I'm copying, I'm going to go to WAVE, I'm going to paste the information in the address field, and I'm going to hit enter. And it's telling me that there's some kind of ad blocker, I'll ignore that. Oh, wow, and it's telling me that there are zero errors zero contrast errors. It is giving me some alerts, features. It talks about structural elements and ARIA. And if I don't understand what um, these symbols mean, I can actually go, well, let's see here. Let me see if I can move this ad blocker out of the way. And I know that I need to get this wrapped up so you all can uh, ask questions. Okay, so I've actually clicked on one of the symbols over here on the page itself. And it talks to me about an ARIA label and it says an ARIA label or ARIA labeled by attribute is present. In order to understand more about what that problem might be, I can click here on reference and over here on the left-hand side of my screen, I can learn more about what an ARIA label means, why it matters to someone who may have a disability navigating my site. This also tells me what to do. So you don't have to guess. It talks to you about, uh, Wave talks to you about the solution right over here. And then to get away from any technical language, they've done a great job of just explaining the problem in plain English. The last thing that you're going to need to remediate on this level is you need to know where the code is. So if you come back over here um, within the interface and you click on code, and I'm clicking on, there we go. I was about to get mad. Okay, so I've clicked on the code and there it is. This is what I would begin to look for using inspector and you all have your own website, so you can actually use VS Code, find where the code is, and then use the help that you're getting here in WAVE to begin to make your websites accessible. And I know that that went by very quickly, and it wasn't a detailed explanation, but through the Women in Code group, I, uh, I am periodically um, doing Saturday morning workshops where I talk through this in more detail. And the students who participate are also doing um, 
exercises while I'm conducting the workshop to get more hands-on experience. So if you want to know more about the world, uh, the world of accessibility and remediation, just uh, make sure you uh, pay attention when those meetups come up that have my name on it, and you're, you would be more than welcome to join in, join in on one of the Saturday workshops. Thank you so much. And that's it, Max. Does anyone have any questions for me? I'm going to unmute in person and remotely. Feel free to unmute and ask any questions. Uh, thank you, Dana. Um, can men come to the women codes uh, sessions? They surely can. And uh, not only uh, do men come and participate, but we also have some men who teach for us, like Ryan Goss, who's one of your instructors. He he also teaches uh, workshops from time to time. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Dana? Yes. Hi, this is Shantina. Hi, Shantina. Hi. Hello. Um, I was wondering uh, with all the, the jobs and the need um, that you that you go to, um, how many, like if you could put a percentage on it, a rough percentage, how many, what would be the percentage of websites would you say are not accessible at this time? <laughs> I know that's like a far off question, I know, but just yeah. even from your scope, you know, um, how many have you encountered? What percentage roughly have you encountered that are not accessible at this time? As far as the websites that, that I have encountered, 100% of them have some type of accessibility error and wow. they range and they range from critical to moderate. And because I am remediating at such scale with our developers and our resources are limited, we have to do it very strategically and we have to set our priorities. And so what I do is when, when the reports come to me, so I don't use WAVE. I use something that can scan thousands and thousands of pages over the course of a day. Some of Sometimes I have to wait two weeks for a report to even be generated for me because some of our sites are just that big. And then I begin to organize them. And then I look at the issues that are most critical to causing users to not even be able to get into our digital environment. So what that looks like on my end, and if we go here to Duke University, most of our websites have a navigation bar, right? And I'm able to interact with my page by clicking this mouse. But if I am a keyboard user, okay, and I begin to hit this tab key. So the first thing that you'll see is I'm being allowed to skip to main content. That is because if I'm like a super fan and I know everything that's in the navigation, I might want to skip the navigation and go to the main story. I have the option to do that. So I'll go ahead and tab. Uh, we won't talk about pause or rotators, but now I'm in the navigation bar and you can see that it has a, what they call a focus outline, which is also required for um, accessibility for a visual user. But if I were blind and I would hear a screen reader say sports, there has to be some code here that lets me know whether or not this sports menu item has a sub menu. If it tells me that it has a sub menu, I'm going to hit enter. Visually, I should be able to see the sub menu open. The screen reader is going to tell a blind person sub menu has expanded. And then I should be able to tab through every item here that you are able to interact with with a mouse. I should be able to hear cross country, schedule for cross country. I may even hear whether or not this is for men or women's sports. So in order to in order to make these sites accessible for people who are blind, we need to begin to think about what it is that they are not seeing even in context of different categories and begin to create alt text or ARIA labels so that they get the same meaning from that page as a sighted person would get. Um, just about every page that I've come across has had 
at least one critical item um, because these pages are, are, are very complex and it really hasn't been that long that this particular company has engaged in the journey of accessibility. And uh, I was just the person to take them there. <laughs> so we have, we've done a lot of work, but we still have a lot of work to do. I'm, I'm not only educating people within my company, but I even educate the clients who come to me and say, I work with a lot of athletic directors in all 50 states. They don't wanna be doing this. They say to me, Dana, I don't know what I'm doing. What's going on? Tell me what's going on and tell right. me how you're gonna fix it. Right. And this is, this is something that I do every day from north, south, east and west. But I love it, I love it. And I would highly encourage any of you who are thinking that you want to, that if you may not necessarily wanna do a lot of back end stuff, you love the front end um, and you want to dive into accessibility, this would, this would be a very nice compromise, <laughs> a nice job to have on the front end. It's gonna keep you there, I warn you depending on what type of company you get into, it, it can be a very big job. I didn't know how big my job was gonna be um, before I started, not to say that that would have turned me away, but it's, it, it's very challenging, but I love it because once we make these websites accessible, I, we, we have had people go onto Twitter and say, you know what, I called up, spoke to Dana, emailed her, she responded. Now I can go in and now I know what my team is doing. I have a very, very, very passionate sports fan who's blind, who lives down in New York City. He'll call me on the weekends sometimes and say, hey, I can't get to my schedule. So this is very real stuff. And you don't want to mess with the sports fan. Oh, they they will try. Yeah, I, we've, been, we've been up on Twitter a couple of times with complaints, but I hop right on it. And I just I try to make sure that our that our websites and our schedules and our navigations are are as inclusive as possible because when a sports fan cannot find out information about their team, they they can be as brutal on social media as they can be in the stands. But I, I love it. I love it. And that's it, Matt. I, Max, Max, I'm sorry. I know I'm a little over, so let me stop there. Thanks so much. Any other final questions for Dana? Larry well, said, thank you. Sorry, I had you on mute. No, though, that, that's okay. So um, I will make sure, Max, that I, that I send the, the links to you for Sidearm Sports and for WAVE. And then when you get time, just um, share, share it with your students. I'm awesome. on LinkedIn. Um, very easy to find. Uh, Dana McMullen. Look me up, Max. I, I'll be sure to send you the LinkedIn link also. So without further ado, you all have a good night. I will see you all at graduation, I hope. And then after that, I hope maybe some of you will reach back out and let me know when you get hired for a tech job. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Oh, how do I get out of here now? Hold on. And I have to stop my share. There we go. Good I night, everyone. Yeah, for you. Awesome. I will pause. She is a graduate of cohort two, um, has already uh, landed not one, but two jobs after the uh, cohort two. Um, so she's coming in and going to give you tips on how she stayed on track after graduation and then kind of what her journey has been like. Um, Latonia regularly schedules one-on-ones with me, um, and I'm always happy to see her progress, and she's a, a great model example of what to do after this program. So she'll be in next Monday. Um, just for a quick rundown for you guys. Um, rest of this week will be in person. I've got two polls headed your way before we dive into class tonight. Um, one, Open Hack got moved to tomorrow. So I am going to open a poll for canceling class. Um, the options are basically either going to be taking class fully remote tomorrow or canceling class for Open Hack. Um, I will be at Open Hack if you decide to do that. We'll be happy to do one on ones during that time. Um, but I'm going to open that poll in one second, and then the other one will be for office hours. So let me just kick that off really quickly. 
see if I still have a. Hmm. To hack or not to hack is the question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this is an anonymous poll. I will I will mention. Okay, that should be up on your screens. Oh, hold on. I got to move that over. You guys can see the live results. <laughs> Seven votes in. Being in person is so deadly because I forget that my main monitor is up there. So I'm like, oh, wait, hold on. You shouldn't see that. 11 votes in, 12 votes in. Actually going to end the polling there because there's no way you can catch up. Uh, looks like the uh, vote was to uh, go virtual tomorrow night and keep class on. So we will not be attending uh, Open Act tomorrow night. We will keep on pushing on uh, for that. So I will stop sharing there. We will have class uh, tomorrow night. Uh, it will be fully virtual and then we'll be in person on Wednesday and on Thursday. I just think it's gonna be too loud here with, with Open Act going on. So, um, and then the other one I wanted to quickly do uh, was around office hours. Um, there. Um, I will actually be traveling on Saturday, so I cannot offer that as a time. Um, <clears throat> so quick poll on office hours, um, 10 a.m. Sunday, 5 p.m. Sunday, or can't make it. Uh, no hard feelings, but they will be fully virtual. Friday's off the table. <laughs> This Friday, unfortunately, so I will be packing. I will be conducting a meeting somewhere. Uh, eight votes in. Oh, you're all little wires on can't make it. Cemetery <laughs> board. Um, I was on a cemetery board in Utica, and the cemetery has been abandoned. And so now a lot of people are going to get up there and probably cuss me out, but it's okay. Hey, is uh, is 10 a.m. The, the earliest? Yes. Great. I am not a morning person. Okay. All right. It looks like strong preference for 5 p.m. on Sunday. Um, so we will keep that time. Um, if that time does not work for you um, and you really uh, have like questions that you would like to ask, either Slack them to me and I'll answer them during office hours. Um, or I know I have a couple one-on-one -on -one slots open in the morning. Um, so feel free to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me if those times don't work with, uh, work for you. Um, but we will do office hours fully virtual 5 p.m. on Sunday. Any questions on logistics? We will be fully remote after this until uh, towards the end of August. You guys are so welcome to come in for a class. I just won't be here. Um, and then Nathan is coming in the 15th, I believe, the week of the 15th. Um, and he is fully virtual. He's not even in the state. Um, so that's what's coming up. Um, we are, our plan for today is to work on um, the blog project, hopefully get that wrapped up. Uh, two things we're going to uh, set up is editing our posts. Um, and then also uh, being able to see all of the posts by a certain user. Um, so we're going to dive into um, database associations today and also setting up the editor. Um, tomorrow, we are going to do a review on React routing um, for project setup of figuring out how your routes are going to work, how to do the layout. I know we touched on that during office hours yesterday, um, but I thought it would be good for the whole class to get a review on, on routing and layout. 
Um, so we'll go through a React project set up for that tomorrow night. Um, and we will also have a form set up for um, some concepts. I know that JavaScript syntax is something that um, a couple of people have struggled with. You know, it's like you're using it, but you might not fully understand it. Um, so JavaScript syntax is something we will dive into uh, tomorrow as well. Any questions? What did we learn last week? Any light bulb moments, anything over the weekend that started to make more sense? How are we feeling? I feel like I I understand everything and I got a good idea on how to make everything connect and yeah, that's so I think the where I'm really stuck at is going back and remembering how to put upload to get home to make sure my newest project. Awesome. That is something that I may try and incorporate um, into this week. If not, Nathan's coming back and doing a whole um, advanced Git review. So that will be a good review as well. He's also going to go through full stack deploy so that you can take your uh, Postgres backend, Node, Express, all of that stuff and deploy it to a, a web host called Heroku, um, which is built on top of AWS. Um, so he'll be coming in and also going over that to be a good refresher on DNS and all the stuff you, you learned the first time that he was in. So um, it's just more advanced, everything that he covered uh, in the that first week that he taught will just be a good review and leveling up as well. What will that look like? You will deploy your back end just like you deployed your front end. So instead of using GitHub pages, you're going to have a separate URL. URL. Uh, so you'll have like api.mydomainname.com um, and he'll go through how to deploy your database and connect your database into your production back end um, and go through kind of environment variables and stuff like that. So how like just how will our database look like? Like, how will it be like from our laptop? So it won't be running on your laptop. It will be running on a server up in the cloud. Oh. Uh, in the your back end will definitely be in Heroku. I'm not quite sure where he does the Postgres hosting, but it very well could be on Heroku. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, nope. let's dive in. We will do our setup as always. Let me share my screen. We are going to start on the code as we left it on Thursday. Um, that means in my my code, my week 18, my day four, I am going to uh, delete out my node modules so it just copies a little bit quicker. I'm going to uh, copy my day four. I'm going to make a new week 19. Can you believe it? We're over the three quarter way mark. I'm gonna paste that in, rename it to day one. I'm going to make a zip for you guys. If you would prefer to start with my code as opposed to your code, I am dumping that into the live stream in Slack. I am then opening my day one, opening my front end in VS Code. Switch my microphone over. You can hear me a little better. I'm going to right click, open an integrated terminal on my front end. I'm going to npm i. And while that's going through, I'm opening up my back end, putting that over here. Okay, man. Opening my server JS, open an integrated terminal, npm i on that. Go to your DB, your db.js, and make sure that your username here is changed from hack up state. If you are using my code, if you're using your own code, it should be the same. Um, and now you can npm run start on the back end. Always a good idea to start the back end before you start the front end. Switching over to my front end. I already npm i'd there, so I'm going to npm run start here. That is going to pop open my localhost 3001. I should be able to log in 
Uh, my username is Max. My password is super secret. If you have changed it, you should know what you've changed it to. And we should be in this screen. I believe we made our delete button work, um, but we have not gotten our edit button to work. So I'm going to poll here, make sure everyone is set up. And while I have that poll going, I am going to go start live streams. Max, I, I tried to drag and drop, and I think I did something wrong. Just close out of whatever folder popped open and try it again. And if you mm -hmm. still need help, let me know. I will stop my screen share and let you get it. Get into the screen share, I mean. So, because I was trying to do day 19, I mean, week 19, day one. But it didn't, it's not in that folder. Um, let's see. Maybe you just recopy week 18, day four into week 19, day one. Right. I was trying to do it in my C3 code and it wasn't letting me do it. So I tried to do it in VS code and it didn't work. You want to share the screen? Yes. Let's see. So I have this code. That's my code from last week. I didn't. I didn't do day three and day four, but it's okay. all the all the same code. So then I, I, I can't. It wasn't letting me drag. Oh. I can't drag, like I was trying to drag. Mm -hmm. Of course it might do it now. Last time it let me drag and then it, it let me mm -hmm. select day one. So I find it easier if you just put that back where, oh, hit command Z, you just put your front end in your back end. Okay, I find it easier if you click on day two, mm -hmm. just hit command C on the keyboard. Mm -hmm then go back to your week 19. Delete your day one. So single click and command delete. Oh, my glasses. Yep, move to trash. No, no, you had it. Fourth one. Now hit command V. Why is that taking, okay, there we go. Command V to paste. And when that's done, just rename day two to day one. Oh, okay, okay. Make sense? Yes, a lot, yes. Uh, Wayne, if your question is about break, we can try and take it at 645 instead. If your question is not about break, come off mute and share your screen. Okay, Larry, you have a question? Okay, so your 5432 is not running, which means it must be a problem with your Postgres. Um, so go to the Postgres app. Yep. Whenever you see a 5432 error, it's usually that your Postgres server isn't running in the background which happens when, you know, you reboot the computer or whatever. No, it's in the front end. Yep. Oh, let me stop my 3000. Um, no, if you refresh it now, you should get to yours because I stopped mine.
<laughs> yeah, if you can. Um, there you are. Okay. Um, so your back end started up. Your front end looks like that's just a warning. Um, so it should be working if you go to 3000. Yeah, you're up and running. So you just have a warning in your code. Um, what that's saying is if you open up post editor on line 13, what it's saying is, is you got this thing called response here, but then you never used it uh, right here. So what you could do is that is um, for making a new post. Um, so if you wanted to, you could just take this const response out um, and the equal, and then it won't complain that you are storing something that you're not using. Uh, um, mine probably will have the same, mine has the same thing. Okay. Um, so we can, let me share so everyone can see that we can start there. Um, so what Stephanie was asking about was in my terminal, I've got this warning here that says response is assigned a value, but never used. What VS Code is trying to tell us is in actually the React server is telling us is that we're storing response here, but then no matter what the response is, we still navigate to the admin screen. So if we just take out the const response here and uh, save the file, we get Webpack compiled successfully and that warning goes away. That was in the front end post editor line 13, if you're using my code. Okay, eight votes in on the poll, one more, and we will kick off for tonight with getting our feature working. All right, nine votes in, we are going to get rocking and rolling. So first thing that I would like to do tonight is I would like to make my edit button work. So when I click the edit button, it should be able to pull up this post with all the post content in it and let me and let me edit it. But if we think about what that interface is gonna look like, if I click on my new post, this new post is actually gonna look a lot like what I want my edit post to look like. The only difference is that it's gonna have the content filled in and the title filled in. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just reuse this whole page and somehow tell this page instead of making a new post, I would like to edit a post that I'm working on. But when we get into that, it's not just that we want to edit the post, it's that we want to edit a specific post. So what we need to do is find some way to make this edit button tell our post editor, hey, we would like to edit a specific post. So the way we're actually going to pull that off is down in this edit in my admin page, I'm gonna go find my edit button. And my edit button is down here with this delete. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use the link tag and I'm going to say the link is going to go to a template literal that will fill in in one second edit is still going to be the link that shows up. And we are going to link to my admin to my, I got to check the URL, to the post editor. And then I am going to link, instead of going to a new post, I'm going to link to the post ID. So the <laughs> template literal, we're using backticks here. The dollar sign curly braces are saying, hold on, I don't want the text to actually show up. Now I want the post ID to show up. 
well, where's the post ID coming from? It's coming from our posts that we're looping over. We get each individual to each individual post. Those posts are coming back from the database right here and getting set in. So this data is flowing all the way through the database down to where we actually render out each post. And what I'm doing too is I'm, I'm linking to each post ID. So now if we go to the browser and I go back to my admin home, now if I click this edit button, it takes me to post editor two. Well, what's that two doing there? If we go look in Beekeeper Studio, we can see, if we switch to the blog, that our blog post actually has an ID of two. Okay, why are we getting a white screen though? If we go, if we go look in the console, what we're gonna see, no routes match location admin post editor two. Okay, well, that means that if I go back to my app.js, I only, I only routed to post editor if the URL says new, but I want to route to the post editor if we pass in an ID, but we don't want to pass in one, two, three, four, five, right? We're not going to pass in every number. What we're going to do, just like in our route parameters in the back end, we're going to tell the React router, hey, we're going to pass an ID into here. Now, when I go back to my front end, I got to my post. Got some cleanup to do here, but we're able to get in. So when I go back to the admin home and I click this edit button, I get to here. And the only changes that we made to pull that off were an admin. We added a link around our edit button and we included the post ID as part of the template literal. And then in our app.js, instead of putting the word new here, we put in a colon ID. And that's saying, hey, we're going to pass in a parameter as part of the route called ID. Is there something in post editor that's handling that parameter? Not yet. So how come yours went to the post? It just went to new post. Okay. Yep. I'm going to try and leave both of them up if I can. Let me stop and re pull there just to make sure everyone's following. <coughs> so, 69 and 70, 71 in admin JS we added. Don't forget to have your import up at the top for the link if you don't use your autocomplete. And then uh, down here is what we added to admin JS. And then over here, instead of it having the word new, we added in the route parameter for ID. Ultimately, what should happen after we You should exit. be able to go to the browser and in your admin, just click this edit button. And when you click the edit button, it should just bring you to the new post page. Now, this isn't the edit post page and it's not pulling in any of our data yet, but that's okay. Awesome, thank you. Um, Max. Yep. I have a, another issue, can I share my screen? You can now. Um, so I had this, I had this coming in. Yep. So just go to your admin JS file. You're in your back end. You need to be in your front end. Um, go to admin and all the way up at the top, all you need to do is on line one. Do a comma after the use effect and say use state.
what it's saying is that you use date right here, but you mm -hmm. didn't tell it to import it up here before you yeah. used it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Max, sorry, I'm using your code, your user and password name, like, again, is, your user and your password again is, well, super it's, secret is your password, but. And my default username is Max, M-A-X. Thank you. Very original. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Nicole. <laughs> Chrissy, I'll have you know that because I'm not at home, I don't have my ice pops, and I seriously consider bringing them in tonight. Okay, so your problem is in db.js, you did not change your username. I've lost. <sighs> So we have to practice reading our oh. error messages because it says initialize session user ID. Oh, I went all the way to the top and it said comment. So I thought that's what it was. Like right here, I read this. My bad. So, I got another problem. I don't know what is going on. Um, login API call failed. Make sure your back end is up and running and that you, um, connected to the database. If you've got a connection error on 5432, you need to start up your Postgres. And then we start your backend server. There's All right, the two files that we changed are uh, right here. This admin, we added a link. Okay. And then in app.js, we changed the word new as part of this path for the route to ID with a colon. Okay, thank you. And if you're still a little lost after that, let me know. Uh, uh, go ahead, Nicole. No. Um, okay, now your Postgres probably isn't running, so open the Postgres app uh, or go to the elephant up the top. Yep. Okay, it is running. Um, and okay, go back to your code. Let me come in. Go ahead, uh, I have a request from my control. Yes, I'm that lazy to get up and walk three feet over to you. Um, not found. You deleted the local host. There you go. Oh, thank you. No problem. As I totally forgot what you said, we did. <laughs> uh, admin JS, we added this link right here. Okay. And then app.js, we added the replace new with this ID. Okay, thank you. Admin.js, we replace the new with. Trying to get the Monday feed out of you guys. I'm trying to change it on yours. It's not going to work. When you, okay, so I just connected to it successfully, but I want to open up. Do I just open it in front end and you know, start to do Larry wants us or uh, Wayne wants us to take break at 645. So I'm going to give you guys two more minutes before we move on here. Okay, my MPM is real. Did you find and read the error before you share your screen? No error. The whole thing is the same. So when you go to localhost 2000, what do you see? Oh, we need to go to any random one else. Oh. Oh. 
direction. Let's see. So we added a route to the post editor. We modified the route to the post editor. So instead of it, the path saying slash new at the end, it says ID. Okay. Can I see what you're like? Yeah. Go ahead, share the screen. Okay, just click the login button. What is this? That's where all the posts show up. So when we make a new post, someone who's not logged in can see our posts. And if you click edit, it should take you to the editor. You're good, you're caught up. Okay. So if you click new post, then it's gonna give you- Still error, take right? you to the same page. Mine gave me an error and now I screwed it up. I don't know what I did. Um, My, my screen says hello. My console says hello world. Go ahead, share your screen. If your code is not fully operational on Thursday and you don't get it operational over the weekend, you're on 3001, not 3000. Because it said I was already on it. So I just hit the Y. What is that happening? Go back to your front end. Click in the terminal. Hit Control C, then up enter to restart. No space at the end of my username. Huh? You put a space at the end of Max. Go click in the Max username field. There is a space after the X. There you go. It's like, huh? Okay, now you're good to go. This Just is where I'm supposed to be? Make a new post, and then you'll be able to get to the end. Of course they work now, but you're... Okay, so I can close this, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So now we, when we click edit, we get two in the URL. That two represents the ID of the post that we're trying to edit. So we need to be able to get access to this in our code so we can get the content of that post and use it in our editor. So what we're going to do is in, I'm going to close out of both of these files. I'm only working in post editor. We need to, in our React Router DOM, we're not only going to import link and use navigate, we're also going to use use parats. And what we're going to do is we're going to say const params equals use params. Then we are going to console log out our params. So if I move that code over, and look in my console, I get ID two. That ID is exactly what is pulling out from up here. So if I change two to the word new, now it says my ID is new, but I'm gonna keep working on that ID two. So I'm going to say in here, let's make a, um, instead of it saying new posts, I'm going to add in an inline ternary. And I'm going to say if the params.id equals the word new, then show the word new. Otherwise, show the word edit. So if I save, now look at what's going on in my edit, in my, my front end. It says edit here, but when I go back to the admin and click new post, now it says new post. So what you should be able to do is click the edit button and have it say edit post or go back to the admin and click on new post and have it say new post. So we added the this inline ternary, check the params for the ID. If the ID is equal to the word new, show new, otherwise show the word edit. 
and then we add it up here are used to rank. What is that called? An inline ternary operator. Want to hear it in new post? Think through what the end result should be there. Oh. No. Uh... Oh Taking off a poll to see where you guys are at. I think it on my ear. It's good. Now we are at the point where when you get it working, it's not a matter of just saying, all right, good, I'm ready to go. It's a matter of reading what we just did and understanding the flow. Where is the use params coming from? What package is providing that? How do we know that the dot ID is working? Where does that come from? What's this syntax saying? What's the first part of the ternary? What's the second part? What's the third part? What's that syntax doing? What's the point of the colon? These are all questions that you want to be asking yourself and making sure that you've got the answer to. So when we click on edit, something's supposed to happen? When you click on edit, it's supposed to load the post editor and say edit post at the top. Didn't happen. Uh, um, let me make sure we're back home. Do you need help, Larry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Economic, where is that supposed to happen at? Uh, if you just click the edit post in admin. Uh, it, right, but where where is that code supposed to be at? In post editor. Post editor. Yep. So I have a post editor slash one and then the nine. A what? Then an the eight and the nine. It skipped over to me. That's fine. That's because you deleted those posts. Navigate const program. Sorry, I'm missing a lot of code. Const programs. I've got them highlighted in, on the screen if that's easier. All right. Maybe I don't know. All right. So that piece of code is supposed to make it uh, when I click on when you click the edit post button, it's yeah. supposed to say edit at the top of the screen instead of new. Okay. Uh, still not doing it. I got use params here. Why no response green? That's never read. Right. You guys good on power? Do you need a search for our turn? Let's do each one. Programs is, do you know what the hell is? Wait. Is ID. How about you, Rito? So you should use the search tool in your text editor because on the in a job you're not going to be able to ask someone that you're going to have to find it yourself. Or start at the top of the code and work your way down. Do you mind giving a quick breakdown of just an hour? Nine thirty. Nine thirty. Sure. Okay. So here's. We are saying my screen. Yeah, I need help. 
Okay. We're saying in our app.js, hey, we are going to pass in a route parameter called ID. And the reason you know it's a route parameter because we put the colon in front of it. So that is a that comes in in our params. So what we do in our post editor is we say, hey, params, pull that in from the React router. Now, when we log out those params, we can see it's an object with an ID of new. So what we do is in our inline ternary, we put our curly brace that's saying heads up JSX, some JavaScript is coming your way instead of HTML. Then we say params.id. What's params ID? Oh, we already saw that's an object. So when we use the ID key, it's literally getting out the string new. So what we do is we say if the params ID is literally equal to the word new, then show the word new is part of our H1. If it is not equal to the word new, show the word edit instead. So what that's allowing us to do is when we have the word new up here, new shows up right here. That's literally showing this part of the turnaround. But when we change it and we go back to admin home and click edit, the word new doesn't show up in the URL anymore. The number two does. So because this inline turnaround is not equal to new anymore, it's literally equal to the number two. Recording in progress. That means that, means that the word edit is going to show up at the top of the text. Well, why is it a number? Because we're literally editing the blog post ID number two. So if we made a new post and we said another post and said edit me and click the edit button on that, it would be whatever ID the database created for that. And if we look in Beekeeper, we can see our posts has six in them. Larry, go ahead and share your screen. You good on the inline turnaround, Zach? If that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Um, so the question mark colons kind of like an if else statement. It is. To it's an if else statement. So if. Else if is the first part, the middle part is if that is true, and then the thing after the colon is if it's not true. So the question mark is then and the colon is else? Yes. It's if question mark, then colon else. Is that more of a React suggestion? No, that's just plain up JavaScript. Um, okay. Um, so when I click on edit, nothing happens. Um, okay, so go to your admin JS. And scroll. Oh, you're missing the link on the TD edit. Right here. Uh, no, the TD edit. Uh, right here. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep. Okay, let's round this all out. Sorry, Wayne, I tried to make the break at, at seven. It's just such a natural time to break. Uh, we got a couple votes in, so we're gonna keep rolling here. We're gonna do our last block of code here. So now the editor, I'm not sharing my screen. Now the editor it can get this post ID, but when we click the, the, um, the edit button, we want to have the post title actually show up here and in here, right? When you go to edit a post, it should say another post in here and have the post content. But we've got to get that from the database. So if we switch to our backend code and look in our server JS, what we want to do is get a specific post ID. So we've got delete and we've got get to get all of our posts, but we don't have a get to get a specific post ID. So what we need to do is say server, go get a post when you pass in a very specific ID, just like our server.delete, we need to do that for our server.get, where instead of getting all the posts like we do here, we get an individual post ID that we're looking for. 
So the way we do that is with an async rec res, and that rec res is going to res.send back a single, oops, a single post. And the way we find that post is find by PK. PK stands for primary key. Well, what ID do we want to find? We want to find the ID that's in the route parameters. So we're going to say rec.params.id. And I forgot an await here. So don't forget to put your await whenever we do a database query. We have to wait for that to come back. Uh, primary key. Oh. So I'm going to leave that over there highlighted so you have reference to it. And then what we need to do here is we need to say when the post editor loads. Well, how do we say when the component first loads? We use the effect. So we use effect. And now in here, I'm going to say const use effect equals a function, and I'm going to say const get post equals an async function. I'm going to get the posts down here, and then I'm going to say if the params.id does not equal new. If it's a new post, we don't need to go get the post from the database. It's a new one. It's going to be blank. But if the ID is not new, that means that we're trying to edit a post and we want to go get that content and set it into our editor. So we're going to say const response equals await a fetch to our API URL to the post with the ID coming from our params, then get the JSON from it, then set our title to our data dot title, and set our content to the data dot content. Pausing there, but if all goes well here, I should be able to go into my Chrome, go back to my admin home, click new post and have everything work as expected, or go back to my admin home, click the edit button and have everything not work. Oh, I forgot my use of, uh, I did not do my use effect right. Did my use effect very, very wrong. Use effect. Sorry, my use effect is definitely off. Uh, make sure you're calling your use effect with the parameter of the function. I had that very, very wrong. So I come over here. Now when I refresh, Oh, I still have an error. Uh, data dot post dot title. Aha, there we go. So now if I go back, I can click edit. It's gonna pull in all of my content for me, or I can click on new and still get this new one. Now we haven't handled the edit working down here yet. We're gonna fix that in one second, but before break, what you should have is this use effect here, this server get post ID here, and you should see what's happening. We're flowing through all the way. We're saying, hey, in the admin screen, when someone clicks on edit, it's going to take them to a link to the post editor with the post ID as a route parameter. That route parameter is going to go up to our app.js and say, oh, that lines up. So whatever ID is getting passed in at the end there is going to come in as a route parameter. And we're going to show you the post editor screen. When you're on the post editor screen, we're going to come in and we're going to see, we're going to pull out the params from the router. 
And if the router param is equal to the word new, don't do anything when this loads. It's a new post. We don't have to get the existing post content. But if it isn't new and it's actually a number, go make a fetch to post params ID. That flows over to our back end and we find the post coming from our database based off of the ID that got passed in as the route parameter. That is going to have our, our information from the database. So we send that back to the front end. Now we come back over here, we parse out the JSON and we get access to the post coming from the database. In order to have that work it from the database, we set it into the state. So it gets set into title and to content. Well, where is title and content used? That's used in my input here as the value on both my text area and my input. So what's happening after all of this is it's coming in, getting the post from the database, flowing all the way through the router, flowing to the back end, to the database, from the database back to the back end, from the back end to the front end, the front end into the state and making it so when we change our, our ID up here, it will automatically pull in that post content. So the only new lines that we added since the last break, believe it or not, are this use effect here and this server get post ID here. We're gonna launch a poll or see how many people get it working and then we'll go on break so you get a full 20 minute break. Who's lost and needs help? Um, is there a way to recover for like I have like seven or like the previous time is missing? Is there a way to recover that or not? Are they just gone and they just no? It's gone? just they're they're gone. You deleted them from the database, so I can't like restart the numbers. You can, but then what happens when you already have existing rows? So you restart it at four and it goes four, five, six, wait, six already exists. Right. It's very common in a database to have um, unsequential ID numbers because of deletes. Wayne, go ahead. I was traveling, so I missed a great deal of whatever you were doing. Okay. Um, the only thing that we've modified in the back end is this server get right here. And then what we primarily did, does your edit button take you to the post page? Yeah. Okay. So then all we did is we added in this params here, this use effect here. And then down here, we just added this line in the H1. I would have like errors. <laughs> All right. So Nicole, you said you have errors. Errors are not, they seem like the enemy of a programmer, but I write code that has errors that doesn't work, right? So it's, <laughs> the errors are not bad themselves. What you get better at is reading the errors and figuring out what the errors are trying to tell you. Um, oh, in the error was undefined use state, but did we use it only in the front end or did we use it the back end? And so, base does not exist in the back end, base is a react so. uh, <sighs> You want to share your screen, Larry, or you want me to come over? Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, there was one to the OR. Yeah. 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 Y
you state are back end or front end only concepts. Okay. So what should be happening now? All right. So uh, pop open your console. Just refresh that page. So these are red. Does that mean they're active or? Um, yes. Okay, so 404 not found. So where's your back end code? Over there. Okay. Sorry. The glare on that is, I, I, you're good, you're good. Oh, my just. I can do it. Ah, that's much better. <laughs> Um, you're on the right. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to be an S. So okay, never mind. Nope, that's supposed to be singular. So oh. you have a plural on your front end. Let's look at your front end code. Oh, you got it right here. API URL that's your post that's your params ID. That's your side. Oh, okay. ah, there you okay. go. Good Thank catch. You. All right. Okay. With the star on it. I don't know why it's being slow. And you're shut up. Thank you. No problem. Number two didn't show anything. Reading title, get pulled. All right, we got a couple votes in. We're going to take a break here. Be back at 7.30. Um, Wayne and Christy, I will stick around to help you guys. Max, can you help me real quick? It's something real silly and like, yeah, I do want to look. <laughs> All right. So I don't know why I can't log into your thing to check to make sure I'm doing everything correctly. But let's see. So check in your beekeeper studio in the users table. Okay. Beekeeper. And see what the username is in there. <sighs> I hate it when they tell you that. <laughs> It says, oh, yeah, I think this wrong. It says var char. So I think this is wrong. Just double click on the table. Did they? Share your screen for me so I can take a look. Okay. Can I get the back end one as well? In the chat. Okay, so your username is sent to Scotty with a capital S. So that's what you got to look at. And then get the live share for the back end as well. I didn't think that that. Sorry, Max. I didn't realize that that. Wow. Mm. Okay, I know it was silly, but not that silly. <laughs> I shared it, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, I'm putting my vote in. I'm good. Oh, I thought I highlighted the whole thing. My bad. Oh, I posted the front end. No, there we go. This is what I wanted. There you go. Just in case it's easier from those links, Wayne. Um, Christy, go ahead. Um, so I have this message and it says that my use effect is not the is. Okay, so what does that mean? We're using something, but we didn't tell it the definition of where it's coming from. So whenever we get a is not defined, what does that normally mean? Um, I'm trying to figure that out because I got to I've added the away. Okay, when we you look at how we use state before we use state, what's the first thing that we do in post editor? The code. We 
we we did this right here that's not the first time we use state where's the first time in that file that we use state not right here nope that's line six so it's got to be above it oh okay do we have an import for use effect no mm. yes no, no. yes yeah. Show me your import for use effect. I, you know what? Did I, I, I put, you know what? I put in the use effect and I put in this and then it changed and, and mm -hmm. maybe I hit something. I don't know, but I thought I did this already. Okay. Good to go? Yeah. Cool. Wayne, do you still need help? No, I'm, um, currently typing okay and see if after if if after if it doesn't work I'm, I'm pretty sure it probably works so. okay i'm gonna pause recording Ivan, anyone have questions anyone need help on anything okay we are gonna keep on keeping on that Okay, so where we left off is if we're at our admin home and we click on new post, it takes us to a blank one. And if we click on edit post, it loads this content in. The problem is, is that when we look at our front end code, when we look at this post button, it's tied to the submit. The submit comes up to the on submit here, which calls the post function. The post function up here is doing a post to the database and if we look at that post the post is calling a dot create function in the database but we don't actually want it to create a new post when we edit a post we want it to update a post so what we need to do is break down our post function here we need to say if the params.id equals new then go ahead and do all of this good post stuff. If it's not that, we're going to make a different fetch. We're going to do a fetch still to the API URL, still to the post, but we're going to include the post ID. And the way we are going to do that is with a method patch. The headers are still going to be our content type application JSON. And our body is still going to include the title and the content. And our credentials are still going to be included. Well, now that we've made our patch here, we need to include that patch over here. So we're going to say, <laughs> server.patch, and we are patching to a post to a specific ID. Auth is still required for that, so people who are not signed in cannot edit our posts. Then we async our rec res, and we say await oh, the post dot, um, actually, we're going to say, we're going to find the post first, uh, so we're going to say const post uh, post dot find by pk, where the rec dot params dot id again what's coming in here because we put a colon in front of it express knows that's a route parameter. Then, don't forget your await like I always do. The post dot content is going to equal the rec dot body dot content. What are we doing there? We're saying hey. The body coming in from our front end has a title and a content. So we're going to set the content coming back from the database. This post right here flows to this post in here. We're also going to set the post title to the rec.body.title. And then this is the important step and a new one. Whenever we modify the object coming back from the database, we need to tell it to save those modifications into the database. 
Then finally, we're going to res.send a success true and a message of it's been edited. So I come back to my front end, I've got another post, I'm going to put a one and a one on it and click the post button. And I get a very big error message that says post undefined. Um, I said post.id, I should have said params.id. So I come back over here, I clear my console, I click the post button. Now I get a different error that says connection refused, failed to fetch. So I'm gonna pull open my backend console and it says input syntax for type integer undefined. Um, post ID. Post params ID. Okay, so let's do this. Let's look at the network tab. Oh, the back end crashed. So I've got to restart the back end, refresh here, edit, clear all that out, hit the post button. Oh, is it now working all of a sudden? Another post one, edit me one, post. Okay, now it helped. So for whatever reason, my server needed to be reboot uh, in the back end. So once I redid that, now when we edit it, we actually get the one showing up. So I'm going to leave this code up on the screen. We're going to say uh, the patch. We're going to leave up the fetch here is we added in this if statement. We put the else down here and we wrote out how our patch was going to work. So what you should be able to do is actually hit the edit button, change both the title and the content, Hit the post button and actually see it change on the admin screen. Leaving this up, leaving this up. Christy, you want to share your screen? Uh, I don't know. It says no man, no man app crash. Click it back in your server, your back end server, hit control C to stop it and up enter to restart it. Do you immediately get an error when you restart it? Uh, let's see. Yep. Okay, go ahead, share the screen. Did you read the error and try and solve the error before sharing your screen? No. It says express session deprecated. Mm. Right here. Okay, the bigger issue is address 3001 already in use. So I remember we just, we fixed that the last time. So it's because you've got two terminals open here and here. Oh, so how, do I need to close one? Close the second one. Like this? Yep. And now you're good to go and you don't have any errors there. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Share your screen. You're missing. Okay, so the squiggly is on 82. What do we know about squigglies? They can be because of what's right above it. 
you need not only the semicolon there, you need something else. Not only the rest of the code, but also a parenthesis on 79. Uh, did I start a poll? Did not start a poll. Let me start a poll. Let's see where you guys are at. I will. So that's the save method. Yep. The post save. Is that actually executing the SQL? and writing out the update statement. So is that a SQLize? It is. So it, okay. So that just, that, over, that replaces the entry in the, in the table. Correct. So if we um, go to our, you don't have to follow along with this, but um, if we go to our db.js and disable our logging or say logging true, what happens is we see this whole select going on down here. But if we click on edit, we can see another select get run um, right here to pull the information out for our get request. And now if we hit host, we can see a update, uh, oh, no, nope. we can see an update run, don't make a little liar out of me, uh, select, select, update, session, session, sessions, sessions, wow, sessions is doing a lot more work than I thought, um, I wonder if it didn't run because I didn't actually change anything. There we go. Update post, set content and title where the ID is getting passed in. So that's what, when we call the dot save, that's what's actually executing that update there for us. On the backend server, you add, um, what, the what dot did you add? Right here. Seven and seven. Let me look at that. Oh, okay. Uh, you should be able to click the edit button on any post, change the title and the content, hit the post button, and have it uh, be updated on the next page. It should show up when you go Chrome and click edit and just add in something here and then hit the post button. It should show that edit in the table. So check in your console, see your browser console, see if there are any errors in there. That's going to tell you if the front end Okay, so check your back end. Make sure your patch is written properly here. Oh, well, get to patching that, would you?
you guys are doing that, I just thought of a third open hack option that I'm going to post to you guys in another poll. No, I was just realizing we could have half of a class in person and then um, spend the second half of class at open hack. Five, six. Yeah. yeah, if we're done at 6.30 in class, that gives still some overlap time. You miss intros, but... Uh, let me leave this up on the screen and I'll start that poll in one second. All right, we've got seven people in. Anyone need help? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we said here was all of this code that we were already doing, right, with the new. But we wanted to split that and say, okay, this code, we only want this code to run if it's a new post. So how do we do that? We just take this whole thing and put an if statement around it. And then, okay, well, what do we want it to do if it's not a new post? Well, that's gonna be the else. So we put all of this <laughs> around it. Thank you. Let's see, what does the patch do again? Uh, I know, I'm sorry, I'm here, but I'm just... Patch is, is just one of the like 10-ish methods that are built in. Um, and a patch, it, it could be a, either a put or a patch, but normally you use that for whenever you want to update or modify something that already exists. Oh, right. I think you could technically make that a post. You just need to make sure that whatever method you use here lines up with whatever method you use here. Max, can you think a few seconds to give a quick revisit of the network tab? Mm -hmm. So when we're in the network tab, uh, I'm going to go into edit and go into my network. So to clear out any information that's already in here, you can uh, hit this little clear icon here. That's going to clear everything out. The network tab does not record any network requests until you open your inspect. Uh, console. So it won't actually show anything up here from before you've opened your console um, or your, your developer tools. So if I change this post and I take out the ones on both of them, when I hit this post button, you're going to actually see two requests down here. The pre-flight you can ignore, that's the browser like getting ready to talk to the server. Um, I don't actually have a full understanding of pre-flight. That's something that Chrome started doing um, uh, somewhat recently. Um, but what we actually want is this 200. And it's telling us the type was a fetch. The response from the server was a 200. So the 200 saying, OK, there's nothing that went wrong. So if you select it, you can actually see that it took approximately 40 milliseconds, 37 to be exact. And 386 bytes was what got sent back from the server. So if you double click into that, it's actually going to give you more details about the request. Um, and not only the request, but also the response. So this is where you can see the browser actually dealing with um, the, the request itself. What I can't figure out is, well, how do I get my timeline? to hide there we go so i went into the settings and uh, unclick show overview and that got rid of that big timeline space so now if i go into my posts um i can see that a get happened here and the response of the get was my posts coming back from the database if i go into preview i can actually see this in an easier way this is all of the data that got sent back from the database. Um, now, if we do something like our edit, I'm gonna edit one, 
clear this here, I don't know, modify that and hit post. Now what you're going to be able to see is this fetch to two. But if you hover over that really tiny, it will show you that it was actually the post slash two. And if we open that and look in our headers, we can see the request URL and that we requested a patch. And then if we scroll down, we can see the payload was what we what we put in the body to say, hey, this is what I want it to be edited to. And the response that we got back from the server was success true, it's been edited. So this is kind of showing you not only the fetch when the browser is making the fetch for you, it's also showing the response of what came back and the payload of what was in the request body. Plus some also interesting information like in the headers, we can see that we put our content type as application JSON. Oh, well, there's our application JSON that we told to, get, to put in there. And it should also include our cookie information, which is getting stored in the database for us. Thank you. I, I never really found my way around to number 10. Yeah, and you can even see not only did that do the post, which is right here, when we got back on the admin screen, it checked our login status again and included the cookie information, which got us the response of is logged in true. And then once we were logged in, it did another call to the posts. It did a get and said, hey, still include that session ID in the cookie. And the response, uh, if you go to the preview, it's a little easier, has our posts and it shows you everything that the database not only returned, but sent back through Express to the front end. Cool, thank you. I have a question. Yep. My navigate isn't highlighted. What does it mean again when it's not highlighted? Um, check your curly braces and make sure that it is part of the post function and that you've got navigate going on down here outside of the if else. I, so I have a curly brace under my L. You want to share your screen? I feel like I'm, yeah, I'm it for you. Okay, you're missing a curly brace on your if. Uh -huh. Actually, get to go pick up the flower and delete the. Yep, there you go. There you go. You're good to go. Thank you. Can I share my screen? Go for it. Missed my call up somewhere. It's kind of tired today. Nine twenty one. All right, your back end is crashing, so we gotta fix it there first. But before we do, go to your admin JS save. Admin? Admin JS front end, just hit the save button on that. Admin, not app. Oh, sorry. Okay, now in your back end, sometimes we get errors. So in your back end, just hit control C and restart the server. So control C to stop it and then up enter to restart it. Okay, we've got no errors now. So try and go edit a post and see if that causes an error to happen. Okay, so now you've got a 404 not found on post five. So go to your your back end and look at where that patch method is. You're missing a slash in your URL. Go back to the front end. Edit. Click the 
edit button on that post again. Oh, we were close. Okay, we don't get any errors in the front end, so it must be a problem in the back end. Let's go back to your back end code. We're not going to might not be sending something in the front end. Uh, no, you are in the right spot. Take me to your patch method. Yeah, okay, it's up there. Rec friends, ID, save, it's been edited. Okay, I don't see any problems there. Let's look at your front end where you make that fetch in post editor. Um, scroll down. Uh, if post, patch, body, title content include. Wayne, you broke it and I don't know where. Um, let's see, request control and go to your oh, I see it. I see it. Oh, crap! I see it. What do you I do? See it. It's right here. Oh, good catch. Oh, crap. Oh, okay. <laughs> huh. It's almost like you're getting better at catching your own errors. Me. Oh, hmm. All right, hit the edit button and see if it worked. Ah, oh, okay, it did. Good work. All right, thank you. <laughs> kind of tired, you know. All right, how are we feeling? Do we have other questions? No. All right. So in trying to keep with tradition, getting to the end of class, we are going to open it up for any questions on capstone or any previous homework assignments. So we will keep working on the blog tomorrow. We need to get author set up so that two people can have a different account and you can see who posted what. We're going to do that tomorrow. Oh, before I do, though, I want to post the modify the open hat question. <laughs> All right, we are relaunching this poll seeing if you guys have changed your mind or want the other option of half and half. I have a very bad feeling that you guys are going to split the poll now. Christy's raised her hand. Oh, go ahead, Christy. You're muted. I can wait until we finish this. Oh, OK. Was... Eight votes in on the poll. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
We've got 11 votes in. I would really love for like the other three students to vote. Oh, wait, where is it? Did I vote? I think I voted. Sorry, that would be me. Eleven votes in. Just one or two more students, please put put me out of my misery. And don't forget, I'm locked in twice. Ah, okay. Last chance for whoever who hasn't voted to vote, even counting in Danielle twice. All right. Don't say that we don't run a democracy around here. Class fully virtual. No splitting class. It's okay. Well, I think it's 25% to go with a certain frequency. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's kind of going together. No, we'll, we'll go fully virtual and uh, not cancel for open hack. Okay. 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 Christy, go ahead with your screen share for your problem. So I added, I tried to add two more pictures. I did what you told me to do mm -hmm. about, um, oh wait, do I need, let me do. I did what you told me to do and I tried to add two pictures, but it's giving me an error message. Okay. <laughs> this is a perfect question, by the way, for end of night. This is what we want you to be bringing in here. Okay, so it's saying it can't resolve dot dot slash dot dot sunset. My guess is, is that you're missing a slash after your second set of dot dots. Oh, I sure am. Oh my God, I've been here all day staring at this. I was like, what, why won't this work? Wow. Wow, wow, and wow. But it's still, see, now it's still- Because you're on admin. Take out the slash admin at the end and add in, I don't know if it's just a regular slash or your homepage. <gasps> oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Let me see. Coming along. Oh my God. No, now, okay, so- I have one more question. I don't want to take up a lot of time. So in my in previously, let me go back to my code. Previously, I had was it here? Oh, I took it out. I had some code that was um. I had some code that was. Let me get it. So I had this, and then, and and it was it, that was when I had it before we I you know added React and all of that, and so I had this code and I and it was making it so that they would uh, stack next to each other. I, CSS doesn't change in React. You can copy and paste that right into your app.css and it will work. But I had it in app. I had it in app.css. And it was doing the same thing, but remember I added a nav bar. And so now I'm doing something different with the cards. So uh, so you've got to decide if you would like to use this column system or you would prefer to use the bootstrap rows and columns. So here is my home page. No. JS, down one file. So I did, so I added the, I added the div class row, div class call, and I did the six, and then I did the card. 
So so it's all, but it's only on one. So that so I guess I just don't understand what I'm not doing to make it so that it's two, so that they're side by side. Um, let me just make this bigger so I can see. So because you have them in different rows. So if you want two columns in the same row, you can't put another row here. You want so two columns in this same column. Row. So do. So now. Um, oh, okay. So then, then that would make a row. And then when I go to the third one, do do the. So now you end the row here. You have a new row, which you should and okay. your column, but then you put this one in a new row. You don't want this one in a new row. You want this one in the same row as the other column. So if you save that and go back to Chrome, can you pull that over for me? Oh, pull it on Chrome? Yep. <gasps> now you've got your cards working. But why this one is, oh, cause my picture, I need to make my picture the same size. Yep. Cool beans, cool beans. Thank you, thank you. No problem, good work. Other mm -hmm. people, capstone questions. Did you stop my share? I okay. did. Nicole, go ahead. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine, go ahead, share screen. So that's because we define create a first user here and we tell it all the ways to create the first user, but we've got to tell it to actually, oh, you're saying, why is your squiggly there? Sorry. Um, I thought you were like, why is that? Um, where? Yeah, thank you. Uh, just switch to this one right here instead of restarting it. Um, unexpected end of input. That is entirely unhelpful. Um, let me just request remote control. Yep, you're missing your curly brace right here. No problem. All right, if you do not have questions on your capstone before you get out of here, you need to review all of the code that we did today and make sure that you understand the flow. You're not doing homework assignments so that you can work on your capstones. So next Monday, we will be having another capstone check-in. We will be comparing your progress from a last capstone check-in to this capstone check-in. We will continue to leave time at the end of the night to help you on your capstone. So if you have questions, this will be the time to ask your questions so that next Monday you can show all of your progress. You didn't get a chance to look at the... I do not. I can do that now, unless anyone else has questions. I have not really gotten much work on my capstone. I might as well get one Sure, go for it. Oh, Doug, the one thing I was thinking, I was actually thinking about this on the drive over, um, try and cluster your set states so they're back to back. What I think might be happening is the set state, because you call set state twice in that use effect. And what I think is happening is the set state is causing a re-render, which may be causing the use effect to be running again. So if you take your first use state and call it right before your second set state, um, I think that that may help the problem. <laughs> Just because I didn't review it doesn't mean I didn't think about it. So in the... In the use effect that calls the two set states, move the first set state to be called right before the second set state.
All right, where are you at, Nicole? So go to your, this is your app.js, go to your home page. And the problem is it can't, Better. Oh, what its problem is? Um. Oh, it's in about. Look at the error in the console. It says cannot resolve header in the about file. Okay, now header JS. Yeah, just take that out because you're not even using it. Good to go. Mm -hmm. which has your header in it <laughs> so you want to you want help setting up that link okay. yeah mm -hmm. so this is good for everyone to pay attention to and we are going to review this a little bit um probably tomorrow but nicole's question is hey, I've got all these different pages over here and I've even got a login component already started. How do I go about making that actually follow all the way through? So first step, go to app.js and set up a route. So we're gonna say the route, oh, you already have a route. So you say, okay, create a new route. The path is login, show the login element when you go to that path. So now what we need to do is go to the header and it's as simple as importing the link from React Router DOM. And then on our login button, we are going to put a link tag on there that goes to the login page. And then we close out the link tag. And remember, link tags are just like a tags, except instead of href, you say two, and then you just pull it in from React Router DOM. So now when we go back to your login and click the button, it takes you to your login page. You don't have to do an extra slash on the end of that link. Mm -mm. So can I use a link for all of them? You have to set up a route in app.js. You need to make sure that route is linked to the component. Then you need to use the link tag and make sure whatever the two pass lines up with the um lines up with what you put in app.js. Other questions as I figure out why my laptop is not being targeted. Literally, it's just not starting. Sure is. That's great. And pretty fantastic. Okay. 
Other question? Oh, go ahead, Christy. I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand raised. Um, share my screen. So this is my. This is week eight, day three. This is a calculator. So oh, we're uh, taking us way back. I know, cause I I I decorated the calculator, and once I decorated it, I, it wouldn't work. Um, okay, so where show me what the show me where the problem is. I don't know. Okay, I don't button know. click is not defined on twenty two. In index.js or in script.js. Well, uh. Let me, nope, let me press remote control. Because it was working. That That's the thing. I, once I started putting the CSS on it and cut, like the changing the colors, then it. Okay, so here's the problem. You're calling it button clicked here, mm -hmm. but in your script JS, you're calling it any button clicked. Oh, so if you call that button clicked and refresh, now all of your errors go away. And if we click on a button, it works. <gasps> Voila. Day, week eight, day one, I think she said. Oh, uh, uh, no, it was uh, week day eight. five. What are you on, Nicole? <laughs> week eight, day three. Okay. 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 You good, or you have another question on that? I let somebody else have a turn, and uh, if okay. nobody, I'll, 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 yeah. I'll come back around. I don't know how to make this whole the browser. Oh, you just double click index.html oh. or go live. We have evolved to React servers. I will stick around for the next 13 minutes unless anyone has additional capstone questions or questions about understanding things tonight. If at any point you felt a light bulb flicker but not fully turn on, now is the perfect time to ask. Yes, yeah, someone please. Just kidding. I have a general answer, hopefully. The um, network tab, then click on the double click on the request row. And then it should pop open a new set of tabs for you. And then you can see headers is up at the top. I think it's the default first one. Just come over. can't be right <laughs> like oh, oh yeah uh, oh close out of your console here because it's like a double row thing and now you can see if you click on one of the yeah, really so, <laughs> so, oh you got it oh click hard enough i guess huh. yeah i gotta get a mouse <laughs> I know this one, like, I have to clean off real good, or like my fingers, like, are used to it, and it just won't work. Yeah. Right. Blame Larry and Christy. I had to order a portable monitor. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't even know where my week 10 is. It's week eight, day three. I tried that. I have learned to use the multiple desktops. Oh. Yes, that is helpful. That too, yeah. It, the problem is people get seasick when you are like sharing your screen on constantly swiping back and forth. I try to not expose a lot because when, when you're focused on a screen share, the frame rate also drops. And so when you're seeing someone else's screen and they 
like open all the windows. So like, <laughs> So that did not help putting the two set states right next to each other. I even got rid of the first one all together. So and I and I thought, well, I'm making multiple API calls. Well, what if I need That's one to its it. own function? I turned it in, so maybe I can click on it too. Yeah, you can. Because so, this one goes and sees if we're logged in and if we're logged in. Yeah, try doing that down here where it sets current store. Oh, no. Try and couple I, those I, two I together. One down. Because it's supposed to, when it recognizes that the next one is a set state, it's supposed to try and couple them together. But what you did here is you set it, then you were waiting for the right. API call, and that was long enough for it not to recognize and we have that one that states states which coming. In the other one. Yeah, uh, my theory is correct. Oh, except I'm setting storage. Both you, chargers are here. So it's not installed. Oh. It would be data too. And that is best practice to not pull it from state because that set store ID may not have finished running before your the store ID uh, set there. So it is best practice you're taking it off of. Thanks. That's your ID one. What is this? Your backend crash? It did. But it did say store ID one. I think it was just your backend try. I think it crashed when you just moved that step state and didn't use data two. So just go back to your browser and refresh and see if you have the same issue. Oh, 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 crash before. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Well, no. Nope. Now, I'm not sure we're supposed to that problem, but keep in mind that we expect our use of back to run twice because we're on local hosts and not the build. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm dividing all the okay. uh, uh, But I'm not sure why the store ID one not exist in your um maybe? Last call for questions for anyone else before we end the Zoom recording. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.